it was it Sarah Sarah Green? Sarah Green, Philip Schofield, yeah. Sarah Green and Philip Schofield. That's what happens when you hit the go live. But you you might be a bit young for this, He's Alex. The... Are you? Does it not mean anything to you? I thought it was a rude joke about Philip Schofield. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> um so let me have a look. Uh we're back already. God, time flies. Well, I was saying time flies. We seem to just I just like feel like I'm streaming all the bloody time now. Alex made me stream the other night and then came and swanned in and gave us some thesis on what was going on, didn't you? It's called a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay, so uh, what's going on, folks? What's going on with you, Richie? Tell me something interesting that's happened this week. Yeah, well, it's Friday for me, so uh, oh. things great now for the week. It's that star apartment. This star of ramen. Star, yeah. I haven't seen that in a while. Richie's on the star of ramen. He's gonna have going for a curry after then, are you or what? Uh I might have to shoot out about half seven, yeah, maybe. Not sure <laughs> yet, but Cardiff Cardiff tomorrow and Grimsby Friday. Oh, that's why. So you did manage to get your Cardiff yeah. tickets, yeah. So that's yeah. why, really. So you're uh, going to be Cardiff Finland, is it? Wales, w- Finland. Wales, Finland, yeah. Yeah, in Cardiff. Um and yourself, Alex, what's going on? Definitely not Friday for me. Um, work, busy. If I do get true tickets on Friday, I will be having a beer like Richie, so fingers crossed. I've saved that for the uh, news section, so don't worry. Uh, I have got that one. Um, let's just pick up on a few comments as people arrive then, um, so we can see what's going on. Let's go into the chat. Um and um, we can see. So John was here earlier. I saw this comment before. Um, John's absent. Um, he was he was boisterous the other night. Should we call him? I don't know how much if how much of that you remember, Alex, or how much he, he was uh, he was on. But he was boisterous the other night. So uh, yeah. So he's not uh, he's not about. Aaron's in the house. Good evening, Aaron. Um, I think that might be Sheldon, but I'm not hundred percent sure. I always forget. I think that's Sheldon. But if it is, he'll be over for the Crawley game. And then Luca's here. Good evening, Luca. Luca, the Milton Keynes and Arsenal fan that seems to like listening to Wrexham content. Oh, Which is fine. Bad, what a bad combination that is. Oh. I mean, you can't get... I mean, uh, well, you know. Uh, you know. You say that, Richie. Each to his own. Each to their own. Correct. Um, so that's okay. Um, and MK are on a run. That is, uh, they are because they are become going to be going to potentially be an issue for us, aren't they? No. If we're not careful, Richie says no. Well, Stockport will be the issue for them, not us. All right, okay. Uh, so uh, uh, it is Sheldon. So that's uh, just to confirm that. And somebody you know, Richie, is in the house. Yes, one of my work colleagues. Uh, no pressure. No, no, no. <laughs> He, he, won't rep- be here for long. he won't be here for long. He doesn't understand football. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting your figures up, aren't I? Getting your viewing figures up. Is that what you're doing? All yeah, right. that's what I'm doing. Right, fine. Okay. Good to go. Right. So, uh, usual format. We'll, I'll breeze through the news because uh, I'm time se- uh, sensitive to the time. So, I thought I'll breeze through the news. Then we'll look back at the joys of Saturday. Uh, before we look ahead to, uh, yeah, I know Alex is pulling the face. Before we look ahead to this Saturday, what do we think? Good evening, Emma. We're we happy with that. Yeah. yeah. We'll try and keep the news short and sweet, unless anybody's got something really, uh, really big to uh, to sort of say about any of it. But I'm not sure we, uh, I'm not sure we will have to be honest. So let's do this. So I can time code stuff afterwards. Let's do this. So. Uh, I will share. I will share my screen just so we can uh, we can see what's going on. So this afternoon, uh, the club announced that on Friday morning at oh, I'm going to say 10 a.m. Uh, it'll be 10 a.m. on it. It will. Oh, it is there. 10 a.m. Friday. Crew tickets go on sale. We seem to have a lot. They must have given us that whole stand. That's given us 1,650 tickets. Uh, so that's quite exciting. Um, I um, I will be in the queue. Anybody else? You're going to be in the queue then, Alex? Yeah, the 10 o'clock and the 2 o'clock. 
I'll hedge my bets. You get it just in case, yeah. Yeah. Is oh, oh, is that because you need more than one, really, or what? <laughs> What's it? I just want to increase my chances, so I'll try on one person's account for the right. season tickets at 10 for two, and then try on my account for the members' tickets at two. Sorry, okay. season tickets at 10. Okay. So we'll see how that one goes. Richie, you might going to try, or what's your score? <laughs> Richie, you with us? Come in, Richie. Can you hear me, Alex? Yeah, I think he might have muted it when you said you were <laughs> going to talk about the news. <laughs> oh, well, well, we don't care whether Richie goes. He'll be scrambling around for tickets and we'll be like, yeah, sorry, can't help you. <laughs> so uh, we'll leave him to it. Oh, he's just put a message in our group chat saying he can't hear us. Oh, right. <laughs> Is that because of... Oh, right, that's te- that must be a technical issue. I mean, he could have used the private chat that's here, so I'll uh, I'll tell him to reboot, shall I? Uh, and see how he gets up. Dear me, <laughs> good start. All right, we'll carry on uh, because, as I said, I wanted to uh, wanted to skip through it. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you've caught this one today, Alex, but the end of season schedule has been announced. Uh, hopefully, we won't be involved in any of this, but just in case we are. Um, the playoffs basically start on Monday the 6th of May uh, the second legs are the 9th and the 10th of May with the playoff final the Sunday the 19th of May um, so it will be uh, it'll be very interesting to see what's going on there as I say hopefully we're nowhere near any of that in it we're uh, hopefully we're long gone and don't need to worry about it but it's 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 just got that feeling to it for me at the moment yeah. i'll be in san francisco the day off the playoff final really so if we do get there it's going to be a very very early start for me oh. and if you've got any people from san francisco watching let me know about some uh some decent sports bars places to watch places, places to go etc etc et yeah um yeah the um the playoff final that we uh, the year we got knocked out, we were in Egypt for what would have been the final playoff final. So we were, you know, that I I was ready to sacrifice not being able to see the final for us to get promoted, and then Grimsby turned up, so uh, <laughs> couldn't uh, couldn't do anything with that. Um, so let's keep breezing through. I thought we just uh, not that we'll talk about it, but we we managed to s- scramble together a reserve fixture. I'm doing some inverted air comments because it sounds like it was basically Salford's kids that we beat, didn't it? In the end, um, I don't know if you uh, if you ever re- if you read the article and stuff, but uh, Jack Marriott got some goals, Sam Dolby got some goals. Uh, can't remember who else. Some of the others scored some goals. Um, Davis got one as well. Yeah, did I not say that? I thought I said Davis. Did I not say Jordan? Oh, yeah, oh, okay. you, you definitely said Dolby and Marriott. Dolby, Marriott, Davis. There was a missed penalty. Um, so there was a little bit going on there. So, um, yeah. Uh, Sheldon just saying it was a hat-trick in four minutes for Marriott. Not, nothing to get too excited about. They're very low-intensity games against a, a very youthful side. But it'll have given them a, a, bit of, a, a little bit of match fitness. But, uh, you know. Um, nothing against that level. It's uh, it's nothing to get excited about at all, is it? Um, unfortunately, we could do with those uh, some more taxing reserve fixtures and more regularity of them, really, couldn't we? Um, um, you know what? I think Murray again, three goals might just give him a team. little bit of a. But then he'll be, he'll be thinking to himself, "Well, that was against a twenty-year-old kid. I should be doing that." Hey, the, uh, a goal is a goal. Well, I mean, I'm sure he scores in training. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true, but yeah. <laughs> competitive match against the League Two reserve team, hat trick in four minutes. Got to do his confidence some good, surely. We'll, we'll, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating, as they say, won't it? Well, that is so, true. So we will see. Um, on to the ladies briefly. Excuse me, chewing a bit. Uh, the ladies' uh, fixture. Against Cardiff is, uh, I think it was cancelled, wasn't it, earlier in the season? Or was it rescheduled? Was it a weather issue? I can't remember. Um, but the uh, 
we've got, or is it just the natural replay since the split? Maybe. Um, but they'll be back playing at the Cardiff City Stadium um, uh, on Sunday, the seventh of April at ten past five. So that'll be a good one for, for uh, TV and streaming as well. Um, so that's good again for the for the ladies to play in the uh, to play in a big stadium. Loving a bit of that. Uh, they did win. No, they didn't. They lost to Cardiff. I don't know if you saw any of that. Um, they lost six one to Cardiff on Sunday. Uh, they were, t- I think it was two one at half time, but. Cardiff's class showed in the second half. They're clearly the best team in that league, um, and the uh, the league table now it will isn't lying, is it? They are the uh, you know they are the the runaways with that. Yeah. So uh, so yeah. Um, I'll just touch on the uh, the news that the government confirmed the establishment of an independent football regulator yesterday. Um, I did just click on the article. I won't show it, but um, I don't know how much you've read of that or what your, your sort of thoughts are. But having somebody impartial with some power, what what we, I mean, it's early days. We'll have to see whether they have got real teeth and what they're really prepared to tackle and what they run a mile from. Um, but what's the what's our gut initial feeling on that one? Um, it looks good on paper. Yeah, anything could look good on paper. Like you say, the proof will be in the pudding and the eating. Um, Big one for me is, can they actually determine who a fit and proper person is when people go to take over clubs or put bids in clubs? Because this fit and proper person test has been in place for God knows how many years. Yeah, And some of the dodgy characters we've had come through and slip the net doesn't bear thinking about. I think the Redden situation at the moment is a, is a prime example. So, in a nutshell, looks good on paper, but let's see what they actually implement um, in terms of tangible actions and rules. But I think we've been crying out for it for a few years, um, especially when you have the amount of lower league clubs in this country. You've got heritage, history, big fan bases, and in the past 15, 20 years, you've probably seen about 10 of them go bust and have to reform, which obviously we don't want to see, yeah. even with our neighbours from just over the border. <laughs> or, sorry, that's the other end of the border, not the yes. other side. Yeah, the not border. over. They don't over. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Too early to, um, to judge it yet. But it looks good on paper. Yeah, it does. Um, I just... Uh, injuries, I guess, is the last one to touch on. We got an we got an update from Parky this week. I don't know uh, if everybody saw that. Um, that O'Connor, I think, basically, I think O'Connor survived that knock. It would appear because he played in that re- that reserve game, didn't he? Mm, so yeah. um, it looks like you know he's basically probably good to go now. Although he won't, when he as soon as he plays, he won't be sort of fully match fit, will he? He'll need a game or two. Um, Barney was the concern. They said that they uh, they're hoping that he's got bruising. Um, but the other night when we were on here, uh, Alex, we were told that Barney went home in a in a boot with a crutch. So that didn't sound too healthy, did it? Um, so I guess they're waiting on the results of the scan for that. James Jones isn't progressing as much as they'd hoped. Um, so that's uh, that sounds like that's going to be borderline for him in the end of the season now, isn't it? Um, it depended how quick that heals. And George Evans, I think he did he say back in training next week, I think is was the was the was back the on words. the grass, back in back, full training next back week. Back on the grass next week. So after hearing all that, Richie. Yeah. Um, how excited are you about Callum McFadden coming back into the squad? <laughs> it's gonna be that, isn't it? It is gonna be that. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Uh can we just play with one less? <laughs> Uh, uh, obviously, quickly, Parky's had some great signings and he's had some poor signings, hasn't he? Yeah. And uh, he falls into the poor signings category for me. Uh, McFadzine, you mean? Yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so it's it's a shame, but, you know, he is, he's a full-back and he's, he's a full-back being asked to play in a wing-back's position. It doesn't suit him, does it? It's, uh, it's very clear. Um, however... Um, I don't, uh, unless you can convince me otherwise, Alex, with no no, no word on Ford. Um, 
surely. And McFadden's been coming back into the into closer to the squad every week. I can't remember whether we talked about this last week or not. That he was sort of in the the sort of uh, sub squad. I don't yeah. know the, the, uh, the you know that group of, of players that travelled and do some light work. He was in there and he's played for the reserves again yesterday. I just can't help but feel it's going to be McFadden. I think it's is, is it next week that we've got to announce that uh, who it, that that last place who's using it. So it, it looks to me like it's McFadden. Do you see anybody else coming in to get that squad place or what? No, I think all the clues are there. Like you say, that he's going to be in. Um, and you know, I don't think he's that bad. And he's not obviously our first choice or second choice wing back, but. He's solid enough. Plenty of football league experience. Yes, he's passed his best. Um, I just think his sending off away at Barnet last season has changed a lot of people's opinions about him. It was a silly, silly red card for him to get. And it, if we'd lost that game at Barnet, it would have really made life difficult for us in that running or more difficult than it was. Um, but I think before that, most people saw him as just a solid option. Solid, not spectacular. So... If he does have to come off the bench from now until the end of the season, I wouldn't be too bothered. He's steady. He'll do a job. Um, but a lot of people are making out like he's disastrous and he's awful. But No, he's not calamitous, is he? He hasn't got no. those huge errors in him. He exactly. uh, just doesn't offer enough probably going forward because that's not his game, is it? Yeah, but what, to him. Yeah. what are you expecting from your third-choice wing-back, though? You're not yeah. going to be... And it'll just what it'll allow us to do is probably at a push if we have to, it'll allow us to uh, if if um, Barney is out and something happens to Bolton, it'll allow Mendy to switch to the right, won't it? So that we can uh, we've got that flexibility there. So that's the reason that I think uh, it's looking ominous. Those are the signs. But I guess we'll we'll soon find out now, won't we? As I say, in uh, in less than a week, we'll uh, we'll know what's going on. So yeah. All right, I think that's all the news. Uh, you missed I... the ladies are playing at the uh, race course on Sunday. Oh, I, f- I, I f- just forgot. Um, I, I assumed everybody's already got their tickets. Have yes. you got your tickets, Alex? No, I can't make it, unfortunately. Oh, you bad liar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so um, it's Swansea at home, isn't it? It's £3 for an adult. Is it a pound yeah. for ch- pound for uh, children? Um, they have been uh, Gemma Owen and, and, and a few of the uh, staff and stuff have been trying to push it. So, yeah, don't forget if you want a football fix and you can't quite get to Grimsby, then join Richie in the tech end and uh, <laughs> and you can watch the uh, watch the women. Um, hopefully, last time they played, obviously they sold it out. I'm not sure. I haven't seen any numbers or anything. I don't know if anybody else has sort of seen anything about how many they'd sold. I think it's just the Wrexham Lager stand, isn't it? Say that again. Just the Wrexham Lager stand at the moment. That's sold out or that's open? Not, there was a couple of hundred left, I think, this afternoon. Oh, OK, right. Um, so they might do what we used to do on those, like, Tunnock's Cup games, is they'll open stands as they sell them. Um, yeah. If, that, if that's if what you're saying is right. So, um, so yeah. Um, we will, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But even so, it's still a good experience for them playing because it is nice, you know. Even though you don't get necessarily always sell it out, it's nice to go and play in proper venues with decent changing rooms and a, you know, proper tunnel and a good environment. So uh, yeah, that'll be a hard game as well because uh, you know they're a good side, Swansea. But hopefully, that home support and the big occasion might just uh, might just play into our favour. So yeah. Okay, shall we? Uh, do we? Do we? Should we? Do we do it? Do we go into it? Let's get it over with. Get it over with. Right, I've got to do two things. Then I will bring up our lower third, and I will set the timer because we only need about twenty minutes, don't we? We've got to stick to time so we're not waffling on and boring people. It's going to be a better conversation if that's the score we're talking about. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, all right, clever clogs. All right, clever clogs. <laughs> you can do it all next week. It was Ollie Palmer scored, it was a ghost goal, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see him? I didn't see him. Did anybody else see him? Did you see him, Alex? Mm, no comment. <laughs> there we go. 
All right. So, um, where do you want to start? Should we just set the scene with the team? Because I guess that for, there might have been a couple of changes in there that surprised people. Um, and by that, I, I really mean the fact that Fletcher did start, um, which I was surprised at, but maybe maybe you'll tell me you weren't. Um, the fact that Barnett did start, because we, we seemed to be in a period where it was a few people were itching for Bolt, Bolton to perhaps get a start. Um, and then the fact that Dolby just appeared out of nowhere onto the bench and Jack Marriott disappeared. Um, however, he seemed to be in that sub squad that was warming up and stuff and doing his warm ups and warm downs. And so it didn't appear to be an injury, it appeared to be either tactical or uh, uh, performance related. Is all I can say. So that was there. Unless anybody else got any other surprises, but I don't think there was any more, was there? Just to uh, set the scene. No. No. Spot on. No. The day started great for me in the mice Gwyn. I had a lovely chicken pie, mashed potatoes, Gary Bennett, and Carl Connolly. It was great, and I was thinking, oh, here we go. We're going to go now to the race course, see Tranmere take it up the backside, and then it all went pear shaped. So. Go on. Who wants to go first? Give us some sort of summary or dig into a plot point. Don't rush. <laughs> um, yeah, they started with excitement, proper derby. None of this Newport rubbish. Police everywhere. Oh, you'd love to see it, don't you? Yeah, yeah proper <laughs> nastiness, bitterness between two teams. Um Without the violence, of course, which was great. So, yeah, I had all the hallmarks of being a fantastic day, solidifying our place in the top three. But as soon as that whistle went, pretty much went to um, went to pot, didn't it? Um, terrible performance, awful performance. To be fair to Tramia, I thought they played very well, defended excellently. Um, you look at their form since their manager took over, I think they're third in the league in terms of league form since November. So obviously no mugs, but we just made life very easy for them. Made it easy for them in regards to the goal, which they scored. Cannon's got to do better, a Conquo probably as well. Um, too one-dimensional, too predictable. He's gone, Richie. He's gone. He's <laughs> cracked like you the other week. <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. Um, yeah, one dimensional, predictable, easy to play against, no plan B. Yeah, and it's a derby which we lost, which probably hurts the most. And they were dancing on our pitch, which should be all no the issue fuel. with it. No it issue with that, should be all the fuel that you need to uh put a performance in next week. Um, and I think that's what sparked the scuffle, I believe. Um, was that they were starting to take umbrage and just push and shove a bit on their way off through, you know, walking through them and stuff. And then I think one of their subs sort of started to be too clever. Uh, and then it all sort of went off and nobody got sent off or anything, but it was all, uh, it was exactly, you know, exactly what you'd expect, wouldn't it? So mm -hmm. before we dig into it, Richie, go on, tell us what your, give us your summary. I think the first five minutes, I thought, oh, we've got a bit of a, uh bit of intensity here but it just quite quickly just disappeared um <clears throat> the goal was dreadful mm -hmm. the when he cleared it it was about 10 yards in front of me and it just went all the way to the other end and then clear. that was a pass as well <clears throat> no that was a clearance he just it's hooked it. no hooked. it's not watch it back um, on watch it back it's an unbelievable pass oh well yeah. until we ask you we won't know but it would just look very much like a clearance mm -hmm. he just hooked to get rid of it um and parky said that we were one on one at the back because we tried to. We were taking a free kick, mm. just disorganised. You should have been more organised at the back for that. Um, Cannon, yes, yeah, should have dealt with it, put it out for a throw in or a corner. But <clears throat> we just were off our game again. Um, I think the shots wise, is it four on target? Yeah. He didn't have. He didn't have a, he had one save, didn't he? Was it in the the deflected one? Was the hardest one? Yeah. Was it Elliot yeah. Lee's that one? I think. Yeah. Um, and I must admit, watching the midfield when we went to the diamond, when he put Dalby up front, the midfield 
as if they'd never played together before and they didn't know what their positions were. Obviously, we knew uh, Davis had come on to the goal to the left, Elliot had gone to the right, and Mullin had gone in the middle. But we were just absolutely clueless. Uh, Cannon at times was just by himself in midfield until he went off. Um, I think Luke Young was harshly taken off as well. Andy Cannon just looked, at, he looked knackered. He looked like a player who just played sort of 15 consecutive games without a break. Um, whether the, I don't think the mistake dwelled on him. I think he just got on with the game, but he just looked knackered, didn't he? Yeah. Um, I just think we did miss McLean. That, that's not, you know, make, make no bones about it. But I would have thought when he put Dalby on up front and Palmer, Tozer would have come on for the throws. Just the throws. Somehow we would have got him onto, in, onto the pitch because nothing else was working, was it? We couldn't cross the ball. I think Barney put one ball in that went straight across the six-yard box. Yeah. Nobody was flying into it. Um, and it was just probably our away performance coming into creeping into our home performances. Okay. So... <clears throat> A couple of weeks ago, what was it after was it after the Morecambe game? I sat here and went, I wasn't as impressed as everybody else. Um, because I thought that the red card helped us a lot on that day at Morecambe. Um, and if you look at those performances in context now, I think they've all been roughly the same. If you look at them, we were just we, you know, those recent results, those away performances, uh, home performances, none of them have been amazing. Um, it's and I'm not surprised at that because we don't do anything different home or away, do we? Um, so this is part of the challenge I think that we've got is that we're not smart enough. Um, but that um, that goal, Alex, I think you were implying that it was mainly Cannon, but a little bit of Arthur. I don't know if you can if you, uh, if there's not percentages in there, but just the way because you mentioned Arthur, I'm wondering which part of the which part of it you thought might Arthur might have been. Could have done better at not been at fault for. Um, but I just think the shot itself yeah, okay, wasn't in yeah. the corner, didn't have lots of pace on it. Scuffed sort of trickly it's, sort of thing, wasn't it? It was a scuff, yeah. Given Arthur's quality, I thought it's a shot he probably could have got a hand on. Mm. But most of the blame, if not all the blame, lies on Cannon. Hook it into Rose Ed, yeah. continue to throw in corner, fine, deal with it. Um, but yeah, I just think a Conquo. Maybe should have done a bit better, but Cannon's exposed him. Yeah, I watched. So I watched it back today. I watched it back a few times, Richie, because I was interested. There were there were people blaming Oconquo for not coming out to meet the ball further out of the pitch, and I'm thinking, well, why would you come out and meet the ball if Cannon is Cannon's goal side? He's the right side of him, and he is basically in control of it. He just whiffs the end of it, doesn't he? He whiffs that clearance, or just pass him the ball back. So, so I wasn't a sort of that part of it. I didn't see as Arthur's fault. Does that make sense? Um, I can, I get you could question, you know, could he have done better with the save? But I don't think he should have been airing out trying to head the ball clear. The only thing I would say is he can see everything. Yeah. He should took control, and that's the only fault I've got with him is his communication. We don't hear him. I, I sit, you know, I sit row one behind the goal. You don't hear him. Shouting, um, talking. I think it's maybe because we've had obviously when Rob Layton played, you could hear Rob all over the place, couldn't you? The whole stadium, yeah, booming voice, like you know, and you could hear Foster shout as well. Howard does shout. He just he hasn't got that voice, I think. Um, so, and you would be saying, wouldn't you? You know, obviously naturally you'd shout, Rose Ed, put it away, just clear it. Obviously, then natural things, but he didn't take control of it, and he could see everything. That's the only criticism I give him. Yeah, I think I mean this is a vastly experienced championship midfielder. I'm sure he, sh he I'm sure in hindsight, <laughs> he'll know that uh, he could have handled that better. Um, but there were some valid questions raised about. I think you touched on it a minute, Richie. But I'll put this to you, Alex. Why were we like like gung ho? Everybody was up there. All three centre, uh, all three centre backs, all the wing backs. I thought it was a bit unusual. We didn't leave a wing back back. Because um, they're normally a bit quicker uh, than Cannon, but um, you know, I watch when you watch that goal back. You watch them; they're just jogging back. There's no real sort of. Uh, I don't know if you've watched the highlights back or whether you could not face it. Um, 
but there's no real urgency to get back. They didn't smith smell the danger at all. Um maybe we were keen to get an early goal mm. after the shutout on Tuesday or the previous Tuesday against Harrogate. Maybe we thought, right, let's go one nil up, make Trammy come out a bit, and then grab a second, and then it's it's almost job done then. I still think the team would have believed Cannon could have dealt with that ball. Maybe yeah. that's why they were jogging. They see Cannon is yeah. favourite, and there was still a lot to do for that ball to go into the back of the net. I think yeah. the guy passed it or cleared it, whatever you want to um, subscribe to, just at the edge of Tramia's penalty box. So one pass from one side of the pitch to the other doesn't often lead to a goal. Um so maybe the players just thought there's no danger, Cannon's going to deal with it, or a Conquo is going to come out and clear it. Um, but you're right, we usually do leave one more player back, don't we? Um, maybe we just, yeah, try to get an early goal and it's come back to bite us on the backside. Overcommitted. Overcommitted, yeah. But to be fair, when was the last time we saw a team hit us on the counter-attack at home and score? Mm. Can't remember. Um Cannon, I don't know whether you could say Cannon made up for it or not, Richie. There was a clearance off the line. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure mm. Arthur was going to get to it, but either way, he's got to make sure, and he can't, he can't leave it. He, he, he can't. So um, he deserves some credit for that because I, I, I had the same feelings as you, to be honest. When that substitution came later on, I was amazed that it was Cannon and uh, it was Luke Young that went off and not Andy Cannon. Irrespective of what you think about, I think Cannon is a much better player than Young generally. Um, I think obviously, you know, age, his age profile and stuff all helps him and his experience. But on the day, I thought Young was having a better game than Cannon. Um, so I was really surprised that he he was the one that went off. Yeah, and it's not too much sentiment in football, but He's the captain. He's played against him. He knows what the game means as well. And he was having a good game, wasn't he? You know, yeah. or better. Not, let's not say great, because I don't think anyone was great. But on the day, like you say, he's performing better. The best person in midfield, really. Um, it's just the diamond doesn't work. Um, I don't know whether you want to, have you got discussion to talk about Jordan? Because for me, well, let's do all right. Let's pick up on those. There's two things yeah. there then, because they're yeah. they're two separate points, aren't they? Because they're not not necessarily in the, uh, the 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 formation change and the player are not necessarily linked, are they? Those two, they're two separate issues. So, touch on Jordan first, if you want. Go on then. So, Jordan came on at is it about half an hour to go, roughly sixty five minutes or something ish. Um, I think was gone. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's close enough. Um. And I've, I'm guessing you're about to tell me he didn't have enough impact for you. Lack of enthusiasm. <clears throat> didn't track back when needed to. Um, was a waste of a substitution. I would. That's how far I would go. So um, I'll come to you. <laughs> Alex looks shocked. He's like, "What?" I'll come to you, Alex. I'll just put my two penneth worth in. I think his lack of game time is showing every time he comes on the pitch. And we've asked him to come on with way more for much longer than he's got in his legs. Um, and I think that's due to how we've not brought him on in previous games. What's your thought? Um, I just want to thank Michael Starkey for his compliment. <laughs> About your hair. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I think it's harsh on Jordan. He's a local guy. He loves this football club. I don't think you'd ever see him not put the effort in. I think Parkey's maybe said, your job is to sit in the number 10 role. We know you've got a good shot on you. We know you're creative. Stay up top and make something happen for us. Don't worry about tracking back. I can't see Jordan Davis ever being lazy in the Rex, I'm sure. Out of all the players we've got, he's the last one, I think, to down tools, for example, in a big match like that. Not having it. Yes, he's not in the best run of form. And yes, like you say, Matt, he's, he's not got the fitness in him. But I think the reason he wasn't tracking back is because Parky's told him to just look, stay in an attacking position and do what you're good at. Tactical. Uh, one of those things we'll never... It's, that's one of those things we may never find out the truth. 
Um, but he, as I say, he did look very heavy legged to me, um, even though he only had half an hour to basically uh, to come on and do something. Uh, although he did have a wicked shot, which if on target, it's probably a goal because it had some whip in it, didn't it? I don't know if you can re recall that. Um, it was a sort of 20 ish yarder that whipped past the uh, whipped past the uh, side of the goal. Um, so, well, what else is there to pick in that game? Fletcher, out of sorts. Has, has anybody ever seen him so bad? It's like it's all he, he, he tried to overplay a lot. He tried everything to be too clever, I thought. And the ball didn't stick to him at all. It was really weird. He's normally got a lovely touch. Richie, but it was like a, it's like he had rubber bands on his feet. The ball, I don't, the ball seemed to bounce off him a lot, and it broke up the little when we were trying to attack. Yeah, his his first touch wasn't great. I did yeah. see people. I think it was a Stephen Fletcher fan club who was saying, "Well, the balls into him were too hard." Well, I'm sorry, but his touch has been great every other, you know, every other game. Um, he's just it backfired, didn't it? You know, maybe Parky's thinking after 15, 20 minutes. I was wrong to make that change. You know, maybe I should have carried on with Ollie. Um, and I just think it, it set the precedent because we sort of, we do rely on that target man, don't we, whoever it is. And I think he played very similar to as we'd expected Dalby to play, wouldn't he? Yeah. He just couldn't yeah. trap anything. Basically, yeah. yeah. Um, he, he just didn't, it wasn't his day, was it? He wasn't, um, he was mobile. He, he got around and that, but, like you say, you just there was a couple of times, wasn't there, where him, Lee, and Mullin link quite well, don't they? Sometimes one touch football around the box, yeah, and it just wasn't coming off, was it? It was as if you just got three strangers and put them and said, right, go and play together. Why did um, just out of interest, um, playing devil's advocate, Alex? Why did Fletcher star over Palmer? <clears throat> because there's been this. The reason I ask is there's been this. What should we call it? Groundswell of people wanting Palmer to start and are supposedly looking better with him. Oh, he's what? Started the last three or four matches um, after not starting for God knows how long. So maybe with a busy schedule coming up over Easter, Park, he's just for Quad plan. give all the rest for this one. Okay. I think Fletcher's more suited to playing against Tramia. It's the only theory I got. He can't be dropped because of his performance levels because he's been decent in the past yeah. few matches. Must just come down to fitness and saving his energy. Okay. Because uh, that was one I, I was fully expecting to see Palmer up front. So, uh, uh, And it does appear that Moles prefers... looks. He's definitely always appears to be more comfortable with Palmer because they've had an extra 12 months together than anybody else, haven't they? Or maybe not over Dolby, but it's roughly, um, you know, he, he always looks better there, I think. Um, he, doesn't trust, he doesn't trust any of them, does he? That That's clear, that is, because if you look at the situation, the scenario, every three to four games is a different partner for Mullin. Yeah. He's he's searching, I think, isn't yeah. he? I don't know, whether, um, don't know whether it's trust or whether he just, he's like, he just keeps swapping and changing because he just can't find the goals that he's... Uh, that he wants, and that's that's part of the problem. As much um, as they're both three big men, they actually play different, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Ironically, <clears throat> Palmer and Dolby are better technically than we give them credit for, um, yet we want them for their frame and their size and the physicality, which actually I don't think is their strong point, um, which is uh, which is interesting. Um, any credit to Tranmere in all of this? Um the night before, I think I I went on a stream with the the, the guys from the local pundit, um, and I, I said to them, "There's two players that I thought we should look out for. That was Rob Apter because he's just been in some good form um, recently. Who's he's on loan from? I think it's Blackpool, um, and I picked out Brad Walker because I always really liked Brad Walker when he was at Wrexham. I thought he was just a linchpin." Um, and I thought he controlled the game a lot on Saturday, to be honest. I thought um, Adkins talked about how his second half, they pulled him into the back three, Alex, and just asked him to sit there and sort of dictate the play, step up when somebody was coming, just, you know, give him a nudge, foul, whatever. Um, so uh, but so any credit to Tramir? Is, is there anybody else that I missed there? I mean, the centre-halves just seem to foul all the time to me, so I can't give them much credit, but go on. 
Um, yeah, I'm going to give them a lot of credit. I thought they, they had a game plan and they stuck to it well. Um, going forward, they didn't really offer much, to yeah. be honest. I just think they were nice and compact <laughs> and solid. And like you say, Brad Walker really stood out. Doesn't do anything spectacular or fancy. You just give you a seven, eight out of ten every match and do the basics. And I haven't seen him play for us. Was it 2018, 19 season? Roughly. I've always been a massive, massive fan. And usually I don't like going for former players, trying to bring them back to the club. Yeah. But he's I'll make an exception for him. Um, just that fitness record, though, in it. It just can't stay fit, can he? That's the only reason you wouldn't. But he's yeah. like a, he was like a colossus on Saturday. He was just brilliant. Like he's yeah, and you look at him. He's very physical as well, but he's also athletic. He's not slow by any by any stretch of the imagination. Just a good athlete, player that you need in the lower leagues. Yeah. Okay. Um, any credit to him, Richie? Or I give credit I, to the I give credit to their manager. Yeah, I, uh, that, he was, um, and we I, we talked about this the other day, Alex. I'm sorry we're going over it again, but we talked about how enthusiastic he was in all their interviews last week. Uh, not you might yeah. not have seen any of them. I've seen the one on, um, on the Friday, about right. twelve minute interview. Yeah, he's great. He was great. Can, it was basically the, obviously he was exactly the same after they beat Mansfield, as you can imagine, right? Because he's just beaten yeah. top of the table, haven't they? Um, yeah. But yeah, touching on that Friday one, he was effervescent. I th- he almost called the game because he was talking about how what he's going to need is boy- the boys to be diving all around the box, throwing bodies everywhere. Um, he-, he basically told us what his game plan was going to be, and that's exactly how it played out. Yeah, yeah, no, I, um, I, he's a good manager, he's got a good record, hasn't he? Um, he's managed in the Premier League for somebody, yeah. I can't remember who it was. He did, didn't he? He did the uh, back to back promotions for Southampton. Is that who it was? Like, when he was in League One, he he right. took them um, right. straight straight back. So he took them back to the Premier League. Right. He's a good manager, um, and I think I'll be honest. If he gets a bit, of, I, I mean, they're not they haven't got the, the riches of of obviously the money that we've got. But if he can get a good, they'll be up there or thereabouts next season. Trammy, they'll yeah. be. Um, you know, he, he's a, he's a good manager, and he he read it. And do you know what? Isn't it's a bit envious that we see a manager who can read the game and the game plays out like that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, to be fair to Parky, I, I can't remember who touched on it. It talked, talked on the subs. He made those subs and that went switch to that diamond about 65 minutes, so he went early, yeah. So he did do it sooner than he does normal. The thing for me, Alex, we will start to wrap this up now on this section. The thing for me was. We just threw different players on, asked them to stand in a different place, but then just carried on doing the same thing, which was still try and get round the outside. Um, and our crossing for weeks has been really subpar. Um, so we basically just carried on doing the same thing. There was no variety. Um, although you could argue that, well, we've put the players in different positions, so that's your variety. I'm not sure it was variety enough by just going... 442 diamond but carrying on doing the same thing is that unfair or do you have you do you agree in any way with that no 100% agree I mean 12,000 fans in the stadium could all see that getting the ball out wide and trying to get the ball into the box wasn't working and it wasn't working against Harrogate on the previous Tuesday night um okay fair enough what's the alternative I said on Sunday why not we check why don't we change things up play more central yeah Pack men in around the penalty box, try and look for that killer ball through the middle because we've got players who can finish. Yeah. Maybe have some more long shots as well. Yeah. I know well, we did have one or two in the match on, on Saturday against Tramia, but why not just have some more? Um, the keepers in this league aren't boof on, they're not top yeah. level yeah, yeah, keepers. I get it. Reliable to, to parry one or flap at one. And like Richie says at the start of the podcast, let's try bringing Tozer on just for his long throwing, something different, yeah. something to get them thinking because they read us all day long. They knew what we were going to do. And their three centre-backs, including Brad Walker in the in the second half, are all big, tall, read the game well, good positioning. I think the way to expose them would be to get the ball on the ground and try quick and get one-twos. Cute quick one-twos. one-twos, yeah, get them moving around a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I was very, very frustrated that it was just 
Midfield gets the ball, put it out wide, get a ball into the box, they clear it, rinse and repeat. Not good enough. Yeah. Uh, just to finish it, we we uh, statistically, on paper, it might look quite good if you want to spin it that way because we've had a lot of the shots, not that a lot of them are on target, Richie. And mm. I'm guessing if you were looking at like we had a lot of momentum, but we just didn't do thing with that momentum, did we? In reality, we didn't create enough. Uh, and this seems to be a thing now at the moment for us. It's becoming too often, isn't it? Yeah, and you'd have thought, I mean, I don't know how different Tranmere played against Mansfield, but you thought it would have been pretty similar to as they set up against us. I know they scored two goals, but are we not Are we not scouting properly? Are we not listening to what the scouts are telling us? Because we knew how they are going to come up and play. The manager told us in the interviews. So if me and you can work it out, then um, surely experienced football people should know when you think, you know what, they say to each other, do you know what, it's not working. This is it. What else can we do? They always just revert to that diamond, don't they? And it, you know, for me, it, it it works in the national league. It's not going to work in this league. Um, you're just getting better more, play, more better more, players on yeah. the pitch, and yeah. one of them, in theory, will find a piece of magic. But we're playing against slightly better players now, aren't we? So it's not always yeah. going to work. And you know, it's the big Elliot, Elliot Lee debate. Was he out of form on Saturday, or did they just fill all the holes where he normally runs into? I, I, um, uh, Kim, who's been commenting here on the stream that me and Alex did on Sunday, she said that he's mentally tired, and I, I think there's possibly something in that. Um, you know, it's uh, it can get hard. Um, to be fair to him, you know, when you're uh, when you when when you're uh, sort of having to create all the time um, is the thing. Um, but we're not angry, folks. We're just disappointed. That's 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 what, that's what it is, and it's not nice to lose a derby, is it? That's the that's the uh, you know that is the the thing that hurts, and to lose it oh, weekly really didn't really sort of you know if you lose it to a worldie in the last minute, you can you know you can kind of understand it, but it wasn't, was it? It was a bit it's just a bit meek and a bit meh. Um, so I think that was the disappointing thing. Um, anybody got anything else on that on that game that they want to get off their chest? Or are we drawing a line in the sand and are we going <laughs> we to move on? It was Connor Jennings that was uh, doing the bit of the, the afters after the game. He was getting involved. Well, I, I watched when I watched the video back today. He at full time when the ref blows the whistle, he is right in front of their fans. So he's, you know, he's he's pumping his arms and stuff. So it doesn't surprise me. I didn't see the, the, the initial kickoffs, but that doesn't surprise me if that's what it was, because I could see where he was. I, he was right in front of them. So, uh, so yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all, to be fair. Um, and, you know, of all the players, you know, he's come back from a lot. You know, he'd be the last person that I would give too much stick to for, uh, you know. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, I think you know, some players you hate them, don't you? You know, and you're like, yeah. but you know, Connor Jennings did a lot for us, and he has yeah. had that illness. So uh, uh, it's just a shame it was our day that he was just spoiling and not Stockports or something. Yeah. Something yeah. Else. Um, anything else on it, Alex? Anything you'd like to add? Anything that's uh, really bugged you, or who was it? Was there a let's? Was there a man of the match for anybody? It's one of those games where we were struggling a bit. I think Cleworth got the official one. Um, yeah, it's hard to. Pick anybody miles better than him, I would say. To be fair, the back three again looked looked solid as they have done in all the matches in the past few weeks. Absolutely no concerns whatsoever with Boyle, O'Connell, and Clowerf. I think they've been excellent, um, and I imagine they'll be the back three from now until yeah the end of the season, barring any injuries, of course. I just want to say the fans who are having a go at Tramia for celebrating and dancing on the pitch. They just won a derby away and one of their main rivals when they were underdogs. Yeah. Well, why would you have a go at that? Um, yeah, I didn't see any. I asked you this on Sunday. I said, I hadn't seen anybody, but I the, this celebration police thing now is uh, has become, I don't know, is it, we've, we've noticed it more in what would we say about the last 18 months, two years, it seems to have become a, a thing. Yeah, roughly. Um, I think Sky Sports probably the biggest culprits. Yes, you know, yes. Arsenal, a few times of was it a few weeks ago where one of the Arsenal players 
took a photo of the cameraman with the cameraman's That's camera. That's right. And yeah. How ago was kicking off, but if you can't enjoy a big win in football, when can you enjoy it? So I did see a couple of tweets, but that was it. But I just thought, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I can well imagine. Um, and it's just you know the uh, the reason I pointed it out before was that you, that should be fuel for you, shouldn't it? That should be your yeah. fuel to yeah. go a win next week. And God forbid we're still in Tramir's division next year. <laughs> you know, you get the point. I know you're laughing at me, but you get the point. That's that's your video in it. You know, these lads will laugh. That's your motivation. This lot were were dancing on our pitch, our own pitch last year, lads. Yeah. Let's make sure we get six points off them next year. That that type of you know little little bit of fuel for a fire. You could all. I'm, I wasn't there at Prenton Park, but did we celebrate over exuberantly when we won there in September? I mean, I didn't go on the pitch, so uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think it was that vociferous. But the yeah. players, the, their players really fueled it, didn't they? This is the thing. They were really like, like it was a semi-final is how I would describe how they celebrated. Whereas we didn't. It was just a routine win for us. But yeah, then... I mean, they're going to finish mid-table, aren't they? So that was probably their biggest game of the season. Which and got their like... fans were saying that, I believe. Yeah. They were saying this is the last one, really, you yeah. know, to get excited about. Go on, Richie. I was going to say, if you turn up and, you know, all know, the cameras are there, aren't they? And it's like, you know, everyone thinks oh, it'll be a bit of a routine win for Wrexham and that, that's how people imagined it. For me, that's what you mentioned in the Mansfield game. You know, I know it's, we're skipping ahead, but the next home game and you go, we're not, I, I would not, you'd be like that. I'm not having them players yeah, dancing yeah. in front of their fans on our pitch. Yeah, thinking that they've won the league. Do you know what I mean? Perfect. That's what you need to yeah. sort of say type of thing. That's how I would use it. Um, yeah. But no, uh, of course they're going to do that. You know, I don't, I don't blame them. It's like if we were up, if we go, up, you know, when we go up, if we go into the bigger grounds, you know, like say Sheffield no, Wednesday or like whatever, you're going to do that, aren't you? Because it, you're, it's the underdog, isn't it? The manager yeah. said to them, everything they've done all week has gone exactly as he said. They've grabbed a one 0 win, like Alex said, local rivalry, and as, as far as they're concerned, it puts a dent in our coffin, doesn't it? That's what they're trying to, you know, stop us from going up. So. Yeah. Of course, if they didn't celebrate, they're not human, are they? And uh, just a quick one to end. Any man of the match for you? Anybody that stood out in any way, shape or form? I wouldn't say stood out. I I think I just probably agree with actually the sponsors. Okay. I think, uh, so they like Alex a good said, one this week at last. Yeah. Yeah. They obviously <laughs> didn't win a photo. They, they weren't bothered who they had the photo with this week. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a farce. If they'd have picked, you know, when sometimes they pick somebody and you're like, what? Yeah. Some yeah. Were a farce. All right, then. So. We now come to what? Uh, well, a couple of big games, but we come to Saturday. We travel to Grimsby. Um, and I honestly, I don't think this is going to be an easy game, irrespective of where they are, what form they're in, where we are. I think we're going to be in a right scrap here because um, I, I don't think Grimsby are going to come out and play against us. They're not going to open themselves up like a Notts County would, you know what I mean? They just go and play this expansive football game. I think Grimsby are going to have looked at the last few games and go, if we just stay tight, we might catch them on a break or a set piece. This is a 1-0 win for us, lads. So I think we're in for a fight here. Anybody think the opposite and think we're just going to steamroller and turn up or what? No, it's going to be a very tough match. Grimsby... Never a nice place to go. Um, they make it tough for... They're in good form as well. They've not lost in six matches, I believe. Yeah. The MK Dons the other week. Um, picked up some decent draws against good opposition. And they're still fighting as well. I know they're... Is it five or six points clear of the relegation zone? But yeah. they still need the points. So they're going to be scrapping through everything. And I think it's going to be a... A bit of a dog fight, which we're going to have to really, really grind in and get a result out of. And I don't want to settle for a draw, but if we get a point, <laughs> you can for settle it, for a draw. <laughs> point might might not be a bad result, especially with Stockport playing MK Dons. And that, and that's the late game. We should remember that. That's uh, a good day, good good TV game for for people. Uh, so Richie, um, yeah. 
So Mr. Artel, as we know, if you listen to other podcasts, he did a, an interview just before he got the Grimsby job um, where he talked all about teams coming to Wrexham because obviously he was here for a while. Um, he talked about um, watching us because he's been to watch us before he got back into Grimsby. Um, and obviously they'll have watched us probably this week or the week before. Uh, so they'll know where we are, what we're about. This he's gonna he's gonna have our number. We're gonna have to find something a bit of a bit different, aren't we? Yeah, um, it's gonna be scrappy. It could go to a controversial refereeing decision, but I think if we get three points, we just take the three points and just get out of there. I'm not bothered about how we play. I really am not bothered. Um, all our eight games. Every team has got something to go for, whether it's going up or, st- or whether it's to get to the playoffs, going up automatic or relegation. We have just, when they say on the telly, oh, we'll just take one game at a time, we literally have got to do that. Okay. But when you're not in the greatest of form, it becomes more difficult, doesn't it? Um, we need something to go our way and we need to get three points on Saturday. I don't think it's a must win, but you look at them all and you you start thinking, well, normally you'd have gone Crawley Forest Green at home, we'll get six points there. But after the week we've just had, yeah, we don't know, do you? You've no. got to be, you, know, you don't know. Um, so I would say if we can get a win, we just take it, it doesn't matter how we play. And people have got to understand that now, it's just about getting three points. So I can't remember whether I, uh, uh, Alex, on Sunday, I, I talked about Mark Crichton's text me- uh, tweet. Did were, were you on the stream then or not? Mm. It's not ringing a bell. I think I think it'd ring a bell if if it was there. So Mark Crichton put out a tweet. I'm just going to summarise it. Basically, he said, um, "Your best bet now is just to win how you can. Let's get Toza back in the side for the long throws." Um, and he, 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 although I've jokingly sort of spun it, his point is that. You know, when we were putting people under pressure from the long throws and perhaps from his more direct passing, we seemingly were having a bit more joy. Is that the is that the worst thing that we could do right now? Is uh, and bear in mind, it's not a, this is a pro, ex, ex pro footballer suggesting it, so it's not like a you know, it's not a it's not a stupid stupid idea, but you might not necessarily agree with it. Um, well, for starters, we'd have to drop one of the back three, which I think it'd be incredibly unfair on Boyle O'Connell or Clayworth um, for them to get dropped. And we all know we who it is, by the way, don't we? Yeah, is the long throw as effective as it was in the National League? No. I think we've only scored it one or two goals from it this season. Off the top of my head, but... Even last season, we weren't scoring as many as we did in the 21-22 campaign. Or we get a bit nostalgic about how effective those long throws are. Possibly. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. I do agree, though, that if we're struggling to break teams down and we're needing that goal in the last 15 or 10 minutes... Maybe that's a good sub. Then it's a good sub because it's a, something different and something which we know is tried and tested. We know what we're going to get. It's a ball into the box rather than relying on substandard crosses. So... Yes and no in, the, in terms of agreement. I think it's a good tool to use, but not from the start of the match. Okay. No, fair enough. Uh, and that was one of the things, Richard, which I don't understand why we took Luke Young off, given the what we've now established is it is core. Uh, sorry to go over it again, if that's what no, you're thinking. No, 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 I, no I agree with you. Um, his set pieces, not because it's not just corners in theory, is it? So it's his set pieces are just so superior to anything else we've got in this squad. McLean is the next closest, undoubtedly. Yeah. It's after that, it's a it's a cataclysm, isn't it? It's just terrible. Um so I was amazed that just given the fact we might cause some confusion from a, a set piece that we took that we would take Luke Young off. Uh which I know is about last week, but I think that's important for this week as well in the fact that, you know, um, I think it's important that he plays and he's on every set piece. Yeah, because, you know, undoubtedly we're going to have most of the ball Saturday. And like you say, they're going to play on the counter-attack. So when we do get in them areas, we need quality ball into the box, don't we? Um, I just don't want it to be, you know, oh, Elliot Lee's, taking, cross. Elliot Lee's taking another corner here. Yeah. And you're thinking, oh, I know where this is going to go. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it... it Sometimes you look at the decisions and you think, have they thought it through properly? 
Yeah. I yeah, I know I, I get it, I get it. Um uh, the quality of the crossing as well, Alex. Those high floaty crosses have got to go out the window, haven't they? We we need we need quality ball delivered at pace that will either allow an easier header in theory, because you haven't got to work the power into the shot, or people risk own goals and deflections and stuff like that. Um, is, is that would be one of my criticisms of the crossing. Do you know what I'd like to see? Cutbacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No problem. I think on Saturday, we had two or three chances, especially in the second half, where there was a player arriving late into the box and yeah. we had a fair bit of space. But our factory setting is to get our heads down and either just float onto the back post or try and drill it and it just gets blocked at the front post. Okay. But I'd like to see us be a bit more composed and look for that late runner into the box and catch a team out. And in theory, that is where an Elliot Lee and even a Paul Mullin, who perhaps won't be as advanced as whichever target forward we've got, in theory, that's where they'll be. So two of your best players arriving late, mm. technically good enough for a one-touch finish if necessary. Um, so, you know, that would be, that would be, to be honest, that would be a natural thing that most teams would, would utilise. <laughs> there, I, there I say it, yeah? Um, but that's true. So team wise, because I know so uh, I know time wise, you guys are uh, were, were worried. So team wise, what are we changing? So we're saying that the goalkeeper is going to stay and the back three are going to stay. Yeah, happy with that. Yeah, uh, we're going to assume that the fact that Barney, we've had the confirmed report that it's not looking good. They're hoping it's a bruised foot. He's gone home on a with a boot and a crutch. So that means Bolton's going to start there, doesn't it? Or might Mendy go there and McLean go back? I think we probably need McLean in midfield, but then who are you dropping? Bam, isn't he? Two game ban, isn't he? Two game ban for McLean. Oh, sorry. I forgot. I thought we yeah. played them both. Um, so um, so Bolton and Bolton and Mendy are gonna start then. That's 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 definite, probably. Um midfield probably lines up the same then. No. Oh. I think. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. I think, Tom, I think I think Tom O'Connor comes in. Okay, that was. I think, right. he, has, I think he has to. But Even though he's coming out of basically out of nowhere, like again, it goes back to also it goes to the it goes to the set pieces thing we think about, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to take that into consideration. Personally, I would rest Cannon. I'm not dropping him. I'd rest him. Okay. Because I think he's knackered, isn't he? That's what I would get. But yeah. He's never going to play, is he? He should be Luke Young and Tom O'Connor with Elliot Lee. But, you know, I once wanted a PlayStation 5 for Christmas and never got it. But, you know, that's how I'm thinking. But that's what I would go for. OK. Um, let's Before we go to the forwards then, Alex, what would you do in midfield? What do you think or what do you think is going to happen? Mm, I think it's probably too early for Tom O'Connor to start. Yeah. Unfortunately, so... I'd be surprised if it's not the same midfield three as Tramia. Yeah, that's that was my default. You see, I'm just that, that's why I said it. Um, is that I just I think he'll give him another half hour or something, and then look to perhaps start him at um, Mansfield um, if he does that half hour. Uh, but the for <laughs> the forwards, uh, surely I'm just going to do, right? do a raffle. Just going to do a raffle. Hang on. <laughs> Lucky dip. Yeah. I mean, anything could come out of this, out of this forward. Um, what are we thinking forwards wise then? Um, so uh, the, Sean's put Palmer or I will fight somebody because he's put a post out today on uh, uh, on Twitter showing the statistics from when uh, when Palmer starts. Um, and it's, it's 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 what you'd expect. It's kind of, you know, it looks it looks bad when he doesn't start at the moment. So. What 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 are we? I don't think there's any way you can start Fletcher after Saturday, but I didn't think Fletcher was going to start last week. So, um, and, and you know, I'm assuming in training he must be really good, uh, and that's why he's obviously just you know defaulted to like well, yeah he's got to start. But what's your guess at what's going to come out of the uh, what what do they used to call Sir Lancelot the old lottery machine? What, <laughs> what's coming out? Go on, Alex, you go first. It's Mullin and somebody, or is there any fear that Marriott comes in? You know what? I'm leaning towards Marriott and maybe Palmer and give Mullin a rest. Oof. I know it sounds ridiculous, but 
I think Mullins been poor the past two matches, and if Dolby or Fletcher puts in the same performance, oh, we're yeah, saying, yeah, he should be dropped. He should be on the bench. Absolutely, bring him on after sixty minutes for him to terrorise the defence. Um, I'd like to see Palmer and Marriott, two new players up top for this one. Okay, uh, go on then, Richie. You've got the uh, you've got the final say on the forwards. I would like to see. Mullin and Marriott. Okay. But what I feel we will see yeah. is Dalby. Because I just think that's the way he is. That and that, and I mean that's Parky. That's his biggest criticism. To not you know, we're going to yeah, match and he hasn't got a partner for Mullin. A cons- <laughs> consistent partner, is he? A consistent starter for him. No, I get that. I get that. And I'm um, laughing. I'm laughing because I can actually, I can, yeah, actually can see, see it, that. Me. I can see that team sheet coming up, yeah. and us all looking at each other, going, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> so that's love... the reason I think. And and you know what? I think you're t- you're flipping a fifty pence piece to see who goes off the bench because Mario will come onto the bench, so then it'll be Palmer or Fletcher will be number five. Then and it must be. Do you know what? How do you get confidence into people like that? I mean. I know we've got competition and I get that, but sometimes you need to give a run of games and like we have to keep going back to the Mullin and Palmer thing. It's worked. You know, it put Mulls was out of the game at the, at the start of the season. It didn't work. So we didn't have that sort of little foil, did we? Bickerstaff come in for a little a little bit. Yeah. But you've got to you've got to go with what tried and trusted as well sometimes, haven't you? It was a big mistake him doing it on Saturday, but I don't think he'll learn from his mistake. I, I just can see the team coming through at two o'clock and you're just going to laugh and go, oh, what, what on earth uh, is he yeah. doing? I, uh, I, 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 that's why I, that's why I was chuckling because it just, if there's a surprise, Alex, it wouldn't surprise me. Would it surprise you? Honestly, hand on heart, could you, would you absolutely go, there is no way that Dolby start in this game? I think we're being unfair on Dolby. Same with McFadden at the start of the show. People are very quick to write off these players. And I know that everyone likes Parky, but Parky's the man who sees these players in training every day. He knows exactly how he needs to line up and what strength certain players have and how they match against the weaknesses of the other team. And people were moaning when he started against Coventry and he was man of the match. People were start moaning when he started against Mansfield in the FA Cup. He was man of the match. He was our number one striker for the back end of last season, helped get us promoted. Um, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't start him, but if he did start, I wouldn't be saying, oh, what's Parky doing? We're going to lose. What the hell is this about? He's a decent player. Um, and if Parky starts him, there'll be a strong reason for it. But it won't be his goal record because what's he got? Well, two. Yeah. <laughs> I've, just, I've just got to ask. I've got to ask. Number what? one striker towards the end of the season. Uh, no, I, I yeah, I know what I know what you mean. I don't know whether like well, statistically, yeah. but performance wise, he was he was he was being he was being picked as as like he was way ahead of Ollie, wasn't he? Sorry, I meant to say number one in terms of Mullins' part. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Um yeah. he's just it's worrying, isn't it, that we haven't got if you take Mulls and Elliot Lee, we're starting to look around now who's gonna score. That's the concern. That's a concern. It is, isn't it? It's a big concern. That is, um, and you know, I just I just go along with it. I, I said, it's a, it's amazing that we're third, and I still don't think we played well all season. Yeah. Maybe the one or two games, but not. We haven't I played. Don't think it's, well. it's not necessarily well, is it? Is we've just not found. We've not found. I don't know what the word is because I know you. I, I don't know. Were you laughing in agreement, Alex, or were you laughing at the statement? Because I thought the statement was nearly true. It's just that we've not found a real so high plateau been... consistently. Is that how I sort of see it? Yeah, we've played well enough to win games, haven't we? We've just we've not set anything alight, have we? Yeah, we've probably been spoiled the past two years in the national league, being used to winning three or four nil, three or four matches in a row every week. That. Um, and promotion from League Two because there is the top three places which go up. It's just scramble into those top three positions and go up and get the job done. Um, so yeah, and it'll probably be the same in the last seven or eight matches. We don't play extremely well, but we just do enough to 
get the job done and sneak over the line. Okay. So um, before uh, people have to run off, uh, score predictions. Uh, two one win. <laughs> After all that, two one win. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be double. <laughs> I was yeah. just gonna say that. I was just gonna say what. Uh, We're uh, pounds in it. I'll buy Alex some time because I'm going to give the answer that I think Kim gave us this answer on the stream, but I could be wrong and I'm going to stick with it. Somebody is going to win this game 1-0. I've no idea whether it's going to be us or Grimsby. <laughs> that's that's my score prediction. I'm going 1-1. One, one. Tough place to go. Yeah, I think we'll leave with a point. Okay. All right. On on that bombshell. <laughs> uh, who needs to go? Do you both need to go? What's the score? Alex, Alex uh, has got a, Alex has got some sort of hair appointment or something. What's, what's... Uh, I've got five minutes. All right, okay. I'm going to uh, talk about something else. What was yours, Richie? I've got just got two minutes. That's all. All right, go on. You jump off then if you've if you've done enough. Um, so I will uh, live. I'll give you a live reporting from Grimsby. Uh, you're going to Grimsby, yeah? Yeah. Oh, brilliant! Okay, that's what we want. We'll have some. Li we'll have live reaction as uh, as it happens, as whatever unfolds. As Richie has a meltdown, are we getting messages like last time, like when you were in I'll the? Uh... I'll be Facebook live in you if Dalby starts, just to see what you do. <laughs> that's ace. I hope you do. Do that. Do that. Do it. Do it. Live uh... off a wall near Cleethorpe Sea, <laughs> jumping into it with a rope. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Are you, how are you getting there just out of interest? Uh, there's, there's, there's three of us travelling up um, Friday, afternoon. Sort of thing, yeah. Friday afternoon. Yeah, so we're doing a Friday Saturday. Yeah. So, I did see I did see a tweet today actually of somebody trying to sell his tickets. I don't know if anybody saw this, and he said, uh, "My missus didn't think the romantic weekend in Grimsby that I'd booked was uh, was was appropriate, so I'm selling me two tickets." I thought that was brilliant. Uh, I, I, I'm sure he has sold his. Uh, I'm sure he has sold his tickets, but uh, no. All right. Well, if you, um, yeah, Facebook me when Dolby starting, that'll be great. Yeah. Um, no thanks very much for your time, boys. No problem. Jump off if you need to, because I haven't got anything necessarily uh, other to go over. I was just going to sit here and chat or whatever and, you know, see what went on and see what the comments and stuff were. So, uh, so no, have a safe trip and I'll see I you then. Yes, uh, no what was, what was your <laughs> What was your excuse, Alex? Out on the date or what was, uh, what was, no, I've got some work to do, unfortunately. Oh, so I need a couple of hours. Who has to do work? I go to bed. Who has to do work today? You not planned this very well, or what? <laughs> you planned. <laughs> this is what you have to do. See that whiteboard behind you? That's what you have to. Oh, in fact, has that got a YouTube logo on it? No. That's Parky's tactics board for Saturday. Is it? Is it? Is it blank? Yeah. Well, oh, no. on there. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I now I hadn't thought about this, but now Richie said it, I think I can see it. I can see it, and I can see the meltdown, and I can then see the Dolby two goals that's gonna go. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is what he does. You can let me know where they're staying, then I'll make sure that the chef can sort of see if he can lasagna? help. Lasagna? No, what was it? Was it lasagna? Was it? Yeah, lasagna. It was lasagna, wasn't it? Yeah. That uh, that uh, West Ham, Tottenham. No, yeah. uh, Tottenham had it. Yeah, yeah. were they playing yeah. West Ham? It was they were playing West Ham, yeah. They yeah. stayed in the hotel, didn't they? It was a an Arsenal chef. Supposedly, yeah. I think uh, yeah. I think that's uh, that that was that. All right, boys. No, listen. You, thanks very much, you two. You two jump no on. You've got other stuff to do. That's fine. Um, and we will we will if if you're free, we'll talk next week ahead of the big one on Easter Friday. No worries. Yeah. See you soon. Yeah. All right, boys. Have a good you're week. Right. Ta -ra, ta -ra. So there we are. That is the end of that. I'll just catch up with the chat and we will, um, uh, I'll stick around for a bit. If people have got another 15 minutes, if you've got anything exciting to say, um, then let me know in the comments. Um, we, uh, we'll, uh, we'll just see what people are, just anything you've got, any score predictions, team predictions, uh, anything, uh, thoughts on Tranmere? Although we've kind of, we might have done that to death now, considering we did a two and a half hour stream on Sunday night. Um, that's probably uh, that's probably that. Um, 
who do you want to win the other win in the other games, mm, Michael? Uh, I can't make my mind up with that MK. That is that MK one. MK are playing Stockport. I think is is that? Am I right? Let's check. Excuse me while I check. I'm sure, MK are playing. See if I can find some fixtures there. The five o'clock game. Stockport MK. Do we not want that just to be a draw? Is that not what we want? I'm not sure if it's better that somebody wins it or they don't. Um, yeah, I think it's the safest thing is to be a draw because then we we could potentially pull away from MK and catch up on Stockport as well. So I don't necessarily think we want to want them to uh, to sort of do that. Uh, I think I touched on that. Did I, did I, I think I put that one up, Brian. I think Boyle has more goals than Dolby. Yeah. The, the, the point is that, um, and I said this a few weeks ago when we, uh, we did a podcast that the other, the midfield and the wing backs need to contribute more. Um, and when I say midfield, I know Elliot Lee is the top scorer, but the, 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 the other two midfielders, whoever's playing in those positions need to be contributing more. They need to be giving them more goals. Um, that will definitely take some of the pressure then off Mullin, Palmer, Dolby, whoever, Fletcher. Um, so I think that's the thing. Uh, Sean thinks we're going to win 3-1 with goals from Mullin, Young and Marriott. Too many home games allowed at Grimsby. Home goals, sorry. Too many home So they concede too much, I think, is uh, it was Sean's point because he put that point up earlier. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm not confident at the moment. And I understand what you're saying, Sean, about the um, their record. And the only thing I will say, the counter to that is Bradford came to us with a crap record and we lost. We went to Salford who had a crap record and we lost. Um, so there's lots of examples where those patterns get thrown out the window by games against Wrexham. Um, presumably it's because other people become very motivated um, to win those games compared to another team turning up there where they're not, not motivated. So, um, so yeah. Um, Michael says, will the bus get turned around if Dolby starts? I, th I think it will be. There will be lots of disgruntled comments um, until the game plays. Uh, I think it was Alex who made the point about uh, Dolby starting in the Coventry game. And to be fair, that's a, it's a really good point because I remember just getting to the ground at that time and seeing the team. And it was it was it was varied in three or four positions and thinking, oh, have we really going to have a go here or what? Um, but Dolby scored in that game and it transformed his season um, and he's not had that game this season. Uh, as of yet, um, he's definitely is it one or two goals. I think um, I've I've lost track now, but uh, it's obviously not a lot. Um, uh, Kim just says Grimby is such a yes, um, it is. And but what we have to remember is that they 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 do have a Wrexham connection. Obviously, Artel is there, and our ex captain in Sean Pearson. So Grimsby, the worrying thing is Grimsby will know us to the to the floor. They will know us. Pearson will have watched us probably. Uh, Artel has probably still been watching us. Um, they will know exactly what's going on from our point of view. Um, and so, we're, you know, we're, we're, it, it will not be easy. I don't think this is not going to be a, a rollover game. Uh, I don't think. Uh, I think Hugh is being complimentary, but I'm not sure. Um, I think that was just basically saying he's enjoyed the last hour, but... Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Q, but I think that's what uh, I think that's what that means. Um, Kim says, if Dolby scores two, we can load into a League Two squad next year instead of a National League team. Yeah, those that forward line needs rejigging for me. It's it, and remember that everybody can have their favourite players. Everybody can think somebody's better than another. There's more than one way to win a football game, but I don't think the squad is made up how I would have made it up. Um, I would have liked a bit more pace in it. I've been asking for some more pace since the National League. Um, and I don't, the, the style of football and the formation that we play, I don't think I would set up like that. 
but that doesn't necessarily mean to say we'd win more games. Um, in the same way, some of you might set up with a four-four-two or a four-three-three or whatever, whatever you want. Um, uh, there's no guarantees, but at least you, you know, we we can do things the way we would like to do it, wouldn't we? Um, uh, Michael's asking any news on Ryan and Rob attending any games. I think they are busy in remaining games. Um, I think if I'm not wrong. Rob is filming Mythic Quest, but I think that was the last thing I saw, and I've not seen a lot of social media from him, so I'm, that's that would be my guess. But I could be wrong there, Michael. And Ryan will be um, in the editing suite for Deadpool, basically. Um, so they will be uh, for the next couple of months. When does that come out? Summertime, June, July, if, if memory serves. So he'll be they'll be editing that film. So that will be their priority. Um, uh, now, obviously, they'll still have days off and stuff that might correlate um, but uh, with with that. But, yeah. Um, but I could be wrong with that, Michael. Um, there is they, – they, they don't tell us, do they? They don't say to us what they're doing and stuff, which is fair enough. Um, some say the team behind always loses. I don't agree. Take a draw. I think that's – is that, Sean, is that in reference to the MK Stockport game? And your mate, I think you're thinking like me. Rather than let one team either get closer to us or further away, keep them as they are, and let's let us sort of try and uh, get away and get closer to. Um, oh, hang on, that, that's uh, less points for everybody. But if a draw and we lose, we fall out and people. Pass. Yeah, I think I think that was. I think you're agreeing with what I said. Um, uh, in in that instance, uh, big Rex. So Michael thinks it's going to be a big Rex and win, but that does not reflect on recent performance. It will give us false hope. Uh, yeah, um, I, I referenced this before. I got some funny looks off Alex, so I didn't go into the conversation too much. But that that um, that Morecambe game, whereas everybody thought it was brilliant, I wasn't. I hadn't seen that amazing performance. I'd seen a good performance, and I'd seen a red card. And so I wasn't necessarily convinced we knew whether we were turning the corner or not, uh, certainly with away performances. Um, and therefore, I was not surprised with what we're seeing now because I th it's been coming. Uh, it's been creeping in. And it was only the other day that it dawned on me. I can't remember what I was listening to. I, uh, I, I was listening to somebody talking about how you know, good teams do set up or do something slightly different away from home as opposed to at home. The normal thing to do at home is to be a bit more aggressive, a bit more attacking, a bit more adventurous. Um, but I don't see that. I don't see that really. Um, I think we always set up not to lose, uh, in my opinion. That's our first thought is how do we not lose this game? And then we grow into games and play into them. Uh, and I think that's... We do that home or away, um, and that's one of the things I, you know, I would like like to see us do different. I think it was Bradford. I thought if we'd have scored first against Bradford, they'd have folded like a deck of cards, um, and they didn't because they scored. Obviously, it was late on, but they were in the game. We didn't really uh, press them enough, didn't get that goal, and they stayed in the game, and then they snatch it at the end. Um and that's a prime example. I think if we'd have got one early on, we'd have probably got two or three. Because remember, when they came to us, uh, our home record was better and they weren't in good form at all. So, uh, so again, it's just football's a unique, is, is quite unique in the way that you can you can play it different ways. You can pick different lineups. Um, there's more than one way to win the game. And, uh, yeah, sometimes, uh, sometimes we can be right and sometimes we can all be wrong. Uh, Brian was saying he's not fit. The only way, uh, yeah, okay. So we'd have to score early to get a three-one win. Uh, and again, that might be a similar thing. You go into a team if you get an early goal away from home uh, against a team that's bottom half, bottom third, uh, and there's potentially a bit of confidence goes for them, and then we can impose ourselves a little bit. So, yeah, you might be. I think. You, well, Kim, you're you're really clever, so you're uh, you're right. Um, uh, Sean, I'm actually more confident for this one than I have been in a while. Now, that's interesting because this is the one I'm least confident in because I know that these guys will have us 
well read. A team searching for goals, especially away, walk into the perfect opportunity to find rhythm. Then we build on it. Well, I would argue the perfect place to go and get a win or some rhythm is at home, and we've made a mess of that. So that's why I'm not as confident away. Um, but maybe you're right, Sean. We will see. Uh, Hugh, yes, I don't do much sarcasm. I think that's in reference to the fact that I thought he was just being complimentary before about uh, uh, about what he was saying. Um, uh, oh, I, I did see this stat, Sean. So if anybody hasn't seen it, there's a there's a, a graphic that's come out today that of all the 92 football league clubs, um, uh, we are we are one of the we have one of only six of the 92 that haven't lost a game when we score first. Um, so just follow the damn script, lads. Yep, go out and get an early goal. Would you? But how do you get that goal? This is the question, Sean. Um, and this is the this is the game that football managers play. Is do you get the goal by being brave, uh, commit a few players forward, try and get that early goal, or are you pragmatic, sit back and look to get it from a set piece or on the counter? Um, and that's where different people vary in their. Uh, in their thoughts and opinions on uh, on this type of stuff, in it, that's the uh, you know that is that. Um, Kim says, "I don't think Grimsby will search for any goals, but we'll wait for a counter." Yeah, I. That's what that's that's our gut feeling. That's what Richie was saying. Um, from what I picked up on a podcast that I listened to this week, um, the Grimsby fan was saying that basically when Artel first went into the uh, to Grimsby. He tried to get them to play a bit more expansive and a better, better style of football, uh, and they struggled for performances and struggled for results. As a consequence of that, he's realised he perhaps hasn't got the players to do it at the moment, um, or perhaps wants to have a pre-season with them to really nail it home. And so um, he's gone back to a, should we call it a more robust style of football, um, which will give, deliver better results. Um, so I think they will sit tight and look for counters and set pieces, really. Um, so I think that's the, uh, yeah, I think you might be right. Um, Hugh says Palmer to start. So it's a really interesting one for this for me because um, Ollie, I think if you've certainly different when you watch a game on the telly as opposed to in the ground, Lots of us, I think we've, we have said this, lots of us have watched Ollie um, and not seen good performances out of him. In fact, I was having a conversation with somebody at the game on Saturday who was saying um, basically that the only good, really, really good game Ollie's had recently was when Rob was in town. Um, uh, and he really stepped up that day. He was, he was exceptional. Back to that 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 striker we saw when he was first here. Um, and I could understand what he was saying. Um, I think the issue is that Palmer, is, uh, that Mullin is just much more comfortable and has confidence perhaps in him. Um, so uh, that's the reason. I can only assume that in training, it's becoming clear to me that Parky doesn't, there's something there, there's something not right between him and Ollie, which is why he drops him out of nowhere and leaves him out of the squad completely. And so he's seeing something that he doesn't like, which we don't know what it is. Um, but the results and the stats, it would appear, lean to that they say that Palmer should start. So let's see. I, I was amazed he didn't start on Saturday. Um, and I'll be amazed if he doesn't start this Saturday. But then Richie threw a red herring with that, you know, a Dolby will start or a Marriott will start. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised um, at all. Uh, so Sean was just saying, yeah, was referenced that MK Don Stockport. A draw has got to be the perfect result there for us, just because we could go either way. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I agree. Um, go for a win every game. I think, yeah, I think I think that's the type of thing, Q, that you say it's easy to say when you perhaps when the, there's no pressure on you, um, and that just the reality is that sometimes you could set up to draw a game and be quite happy with that. So, yeah, it, if you overcommit, I mean, I'm starting to agree with what we were saying before. We we overcommitted on that goal on Saturday. Um, so if you go gung ho looking for that win, that's the problem. Um, but if you set up with a good game plan and some good tactics, then 
going for there's nothing wrong with going for a win uh, in every game. Um, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. I've got another, another couple of minutes. If people are uh, there's still still plenty of people here, so you can't be that bored yet. Um, I pretty much default to dread for every game now. Says Kim. Yeah, I think that's what's. I think I'm in that mode, uh, Kim, which is why I am not like confidently predicting an away win on Saturday. That's why I, I'm saying I, I can see somebody winning this game, but I don't know who. And I think it'll be one nil because um, you know we're not scoring a lot away. Um, I know they're giving away a lot, but they're not scoring a lot. They don't seem to have a a real standout mega talent. Um, they just seem to be, a, I think, from what, I, what, I'm, what I've heard, it's it's a collective for them. So um, that's why I think, um, you know, I think I, th I don't think it'll be high scoring, uh, but it's it's hard. It's hard to predict, isn't it? I know fans follow the team always, but we'll be interested in how many drive down compared to other Southern games, as that might tell a picture of how fans think we will do. Yeah, I, I, well, this, it's also it's situational as well. So just uh, I, I'll use that Notts County game last night. Notts County played Bradford last night, um, and Notts County won comfortably three nil. Um, and I'd listened to a podcast yesterday. As it happened, I listened to a Notts County one. I listened to a few of the other sort of uh, other the you know the other fans. Uh, podcast and they were saying originally because it was rescheduled that game because the pitch was flooded if you remember so originally Notts County had sold 1700 tickets for that game at Bradford um, and obviously it got moved from a Saturday to a Tuesday so you're always going to lose some because people can't get out of work early enough to travel um, and people other people you know people have got pre-planned stuff um, but they returned over a thousand tickets in the end um, and that it was obviously a combination of all of what I've just said, but mainly the fact that county fans weren't confident because they were in such bad form um, and it's not been a very positive place. So uh, I think that is, uh, that's an interesting, uh, interesting thing to put. Uh, Sean says we push save, save percentages 23rd in the league. Faith in our back three. They are mid-table on long balls and bottom third pack, pass accuracy. Push and force them to counter. Yeah, and uh, this this game for me on Saturday is similar to the home game for me against Bradford. So I I believe um, whilst we've got players or we're, we're starting players that you, know, you or I might not pick, I still believe that what I would be saying if I was Phil Parkinson is we're, sup we're superior in quality to them. Go out and let it show. Let's go and play some proper football. Get the ball on the floor. You know, let's let our superior technique um, sort of win this game for us and go out and get an early goal. Go and get that. Go and get those away fans behind you from the start. Um, you know, give them something to cheer about. Let's be positive. Um, uh, and, you know, not just lock long aimless balls. Let's play to feet. Let's get Elliot Lee more central and let him poke and probe and, um, you know, take shots and uh, but but we'd all do it different wouldn't we we'd all do it different uh sean's gone uh i think i have to get back to work so i don't have to work this weekend thanks for the lunch break that's all right sean nice to see you um i will see you on saturday um because i will come in i'll i'll drop in and out of your watch party and i will be uh in your after 90 so for people who don't know uh, of, uh, about an hour after the match on a Saturday, although it does depend on what Sean's plans are, um, he has a uh, a six in, a six oh six sort of phone in style show that you can just jump on uh, YouTube or I'm not sure if he dual casts it onto Twitter as well. I'm going to assume he does, but I could be wrong. Uh, but definitely follow him on YouTube and you can uh, if you want to if you've got something you want to say, you can come on. Um, you don't have to put your camera on if you don't have your camera on. You can just come on the stream. Um, and give your opinion and talk about or ask questions about what you've seen or what we've seen and how the game's gone and stuff. So, uh, yeah, um, really good. A little bit like the Twitter spaces, but uh, it's a bit more visual. Um, and the Twitter spaces have seemed to have died, especially with the results sort of tailing off. So, uh, so yeah, it's a good one to do. Uh, Hugh Davis, we have not lost with Palmer starting. Yep, seen that, seen that sort of stat. Um, so um, that's why I was surprised that Ollie didn't start, but on Saturday. But what we want, uh, or what you want, and 
somebody else wants and what Phil Parkinson wants seems to be different things. He, uh, Alex is right in the fact that he says he sees them in training and we don't. So that fundamentally is right. He will see, he will know their mindset and what's going on and how they've trained. But um, when you when you start to look at it on paper, it is surprising that we've not kind of just gone, does look like it works a bit better. Should we at least not just use that for now until I can make what I actually want? So if Bill Parkinson's uh, preference is to play Fletcher, then go and work on that in training really hard. And then when that looks really good, that partnership with Mullin, then start it more regularly. Obviously, we're at a different point of the season now. The season's getting to the end, so this is the problem: is you need you need to be playing what works now, rather than trying things. Because um, I think that's the uh, that's part of the problem. Uh, Hugh says, "I mean, mentally go for a win." Yeah, I think, and I think they will mentally. They will always be doing that, but managers obviously occasionally will set up knowing that realistically i watched a uh, i'll give you an example um when jose Mourinho was at inter milan he did a documentary they did a documentary on inter and it was the i think it was the year inter won the champions league with jose Mourinho. so i can't remember when that was i apologize about 10 years ago it might have been more but about 10 years ago and um there was he was doing his uh, his match day briefing actually in a hotel and um, it was the first leg, so it was a two-legged game. And Jose basically said, listen, um, I'm not going to tell you you have to win this game, but we mustn't lose it. Um, and that's the mindset that some managers will have, you know, uh, just in certain situations or in certain games. Um, uh, and, you know, they know better than us is, is, is what we keep getting told, is that they know better than us. How can we possibly know better than a professional football manager is uh, is the common thing that you see on uh, Facebook and the like. Um, Kim, I think we are getting towards the end now, so people must be getting bored. Uh, I don't think Grimsby stats are important, but just their recent form and how they will play. Numbers don't matter. Yeah, it's a funny thing that. It's funny how, um, and there's, you get examples of this with teams going to certain grounds and they can't win at certain grounds. And in theory, you go, well, that doesn't doesn't matter how a team's playing um, or, or what the stats are. What matters is what happens on the day. Um, and yet, time after time, these things sort of, uh, these patterns keep repeating themselves. Um, and the, the reality, uh, you know, the reality is, if Wrexham turn up a positive um have a good game plan they should win that game because they've got the quad they've got a far superior quality of player you've got a game plan if your game plan is good then in theory you, you should be in a good position um but football has a funny way of uh, uh of making you look a fool doesn't it um uh and oh that's very kind of you Hugh's just being very kind so uh, I think that's it. Should we leave it there? We've, uh, if you want to listen to our post Tranmere chat, um, we did uh, we did a couple of hours, so that's on YouTube. If you go to the Racecourse Ramble YouTube channel, you can catch that. Also, if you go to, I think it's still it's still on my Twitter profile. So if you just scroll through our Twitter profile, you can find you can find that video from the weekend if you want to watch it uh, through Twitter rather than through YouTube. Um, and uh yeah we'll leave it there thank you to everybody who's watched and everybody who's uh commented um and we will come back next week we will uh maybe do a friday should we do a friday do we do a friday night job do i do a preview um if, give me some thumbs up or some comments in the comments and i'll review them and see if people want something on a friday night um because we could come on for a whatever people want really half an hour an hour and just sort of uh see how we feel about the the, the, the grimsby game do a bit of a, a preview um yeah. so there'll be because we did that last week and actually we, we were here for a couple of hours in the end even though i thought it would only be about half hour so maybe we'll do a preview on friday night um obviously uh, a few people will be at the game on saturday and you can see you know uh the Sean's sort of post-match uh, after 90, so you could see us there. Um, but failing that, we'll come back next week uh, with another episode of the podcast with uh, Alex and with Richie. So have a good week, everybody. Uh, thanks, for, oh, thanks, Josh. Um, Josh, 
Uh, just put in the comments or something, mate, what you've got going on this week. Um, because the local pundit, um, I was listening to their stream last night. Um, um, but let's just, I'll give Josh a chance just to write, see if he's got time just to write something about what shows he's potentially got coming up this week. Cause Josh will be putting out some, some stuff. Michael says the more videos, the better. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you something, Michael. Everybody, anybody whose content you listen to or you watch, if you like listening to them, tell them that, right? Because we all sit here wondering whether people are actually bothered about us putting videos out or listening to what we, you know, we've got to say. We just do it really as therapy for ourselves. So um, uh, I would encourage you, if there's anybody that you really enjoy, Fearless, Rob Ryan Red, uh, I'm going to miss somebody here, so remind me. Whoever, it doesn't matter, right? Anybody who's wrecked some content, tell them you, that you enjoy their content on or their their podcast or whatever, um, and that you want more or more of it because, uh, as I say, they will be sat there some weeks going, oh, people won't don't really want to listen to us. Um, so please, please do that. Uh, Josh might be busy; he hasn't had a chance to. Uh, he possibly hasn't had a chance to. Uh, uh, let's Stephen catch up after Saturday. There, perfect. Um, Josh might be too busy, uh, and he can't. Oh, he's here. We go so ignore me. Uh, we've got a show tonight with Ivan live. Support all the channels. It's great community all around, right? Okay, so um, if you want a little bit of content, that might be. Uh, he hasn't told me what time, but he. It was about half past ten last night. So Josh, just, just. Very quickly, throw in the time if you've got uh, if you've got the chance. Just throw in the time that you guys are on. So go on YouTube uh, and look for the local pundit. I haven't been able to. I haven't managed to be able to convince him to switch to restream so that he can just um, so that he can just stream to YouTube and to Twitter. Um, so he could get uh, even more people seeing his content easier. Uh, Four thirty PST. Oh God. Uh, somebody worked that out. It's be about half past nine to half past ten. Uh, but if you go on the local pundits uh, page, you can just hit notify me uh, of their stream tonight. And he's got Ivan on. So if you're quite analytical and tactical, Ivan will will talk your language for for a little bit. Um, if you're if you've got question marks about uh, Phil Parkinson. Ivan will support your question marks because he's quite critical of Phil Parkinson. So, or I guess if you're willing to listen to an argument about how we can do things better, then that might be worth watching. If you're totally all in on Reckism and it's perfect and nothing can possibly get any better, then I would be careful with Ivan because Ivan will challenge your thoughts um, because he is very analytical Um uh, of what he sees at the moment and he's uh, uh, uh you know and, and he's very challenging so uh so uh so yeah um uh, uh I'll I'll just read these last comments then and then everybody then everybody can then everybody'll be I, I I'm reading them out of respect to the people not just me uh, not me wanting to work through uh you dudes are awesome thank you it's a long week this week yeah so that's group therapy and the very first podcast i did wayne that's exactly what i said um it was really crap my, that podcast i did it on my own um and i, I basically said listen i'm going to do this podcast because it's therapy for me not not for any other reason it's just therapy for me and that's what sunday night was as well we did a two and a half hour stream on sunday night and it was just therapy for me to make me feel better um, and I'm glad we did it. It was great just having a, a chat and working through it. That was uh, that was really cool. Um, Josh is doing some really good work, so uh, yeah, he, he's being nice to me there. But go and uh, go and support him. It's great. Uh, should do more group. I hold local pundit all street together more as we'll get more views. Um, so that's an interesting one. Yes, because um, we get collectively, we all bring a few people to the table. Uh, that's great. Um, it's different for different people. So uh, some people are very ambitious with YouTube uh, and streaming and are very data driven and want loads of viewers and followers and stuff. Um, and I'm not saying I don't want that because you don't want to have a YouTube channel that basically nobody wants to watch. Um, but it doesn't necessarily bother me. So um, it's more just uh, just I just enjoy the fact that there's three or four opinions that are different to mine. 
Um, and it's great that you can sort of get to listen to to what people have got to say and stuff. So, uh, um, so, so that's uh, that's that. Uh, everyone like and subscribe this stream. Good luck with the marathon. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, um, I did put a tweet out today. My marathon number has arrived. So uh, we are, what are we? Three weeks on Sunday, I think we are. Uh, it is coming up. So thank you to everybody who's donated. I've I've got to over five hundred pound now. Sadly, somebody put them themselves as an anonymous, so I can't even shout out that person anymore. So, uh, uh, which is uh, a shame. But there you go. Uh, thank you, Josh, mate. Uh, that's cool. Yes, I mean I think he's just sort of. I think that was in reference to Michael's comments about let's just just everybody get online and all stream at the same time. Uh, so. Uh, so I think that's what that was. Kieran, you've come too late. <laughs> so uh, just just uh, for people who don't know, you will if you watch uh, the local pundit, you will see a Newport fan called Kieran who comes on. Now, um, Kieran, I've never come across a more. Oh, I don't want to get him in trouble here with his Newport fans. Uh, he's very objective. So when he. So he goes on the local pundit, and we'll talk about Wrexham. And he's from a Newport fan, from an objective, uh, an objective opinion. Um, and I don't think I've come across anybody uh, that's as good at doing that for a rival fan, really. You know, from a South Wales club. Um, but he talks a lot of sense. He's obviously very experienced in um, League Two football, and uh, um, so um, you'll see lots of Kieran if you're if you're listening to the local pundit. And if you see any of some of Sean's shows or any of the Red Horde shows, uh, you'll see a bit of Kieran. Uh, but don't just switch off because he's got a Newport shirt on his wall, uh, and he is a Newport fan, and obviously, uh, obviously not a fan of Wrexham. But he's very good. He possibly, I don't know whether you want Kieran wants a career in journalism, but he he's very objective. He will be very fair and neutral. Um, so uh, it's very unusual that because normally, especially at the moment with all the, everything that's going on with us, generally people just want to hate on us, don't they? So, um, so it's quite unusual that Kieran can be so, uh, so objective. Um, Hugh says we're very Wrexham authentic channel. Oh, okay. Thank you, Hugh. That's good. That's, that is the idea. Um, we, hopefully that does come across. We've, you know, all me, Richie and, uh, Alex have watched Wrexham fit for a variety for various amounts of time, but for a long time. So hopefully some of that does come through. Um, and what we say is not the be all and end all. It's all right for you to disagree with what I say. It's all right for you to disagree with what Rob Ryan Red say. It's all right for you to disagree with what Fearless say. Um, but just listen to it and consider it before you then make your opinion. In it, that's that's what we do. Um, you know. Um, Am I running in a Wrexham top? Um, oh, I've just missed. I think did I miss? I've missed it. Sorry, the comments jumped. Am I running in a Wrexham top? So um, I'm running on behalf of uh, an organisation, Michael, called Cancer Research UK, um, and they've sent me a top. To be honest, however, they've sent me one that's a size too big. So I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do on the day. Um, I will, it won't be a Wrexham top because I haven't got the Wrexham shirt, as you can see behind me. So I've got this three in here. This is the, oh, I'm trying to do this. Is that the white one, the green one? And there's a red one. Um, they're all my other halves. They're all Cath shirts. Um, I don't buy Wrexham football shirts anymore. Um, because I wouldn't, apart from a match day, I wouldn't really have the use for them. So I tend to buy the Wrexham polo shirts because I can use them either on the day or or when I'm out and about, and they're not really great to run in. So I don't think it will be a Wrexham shirt. It should be this cancer research top that they've sent me, but it's a bit big, so I'm I'm, uh, I'm going to have to play it by ear. I might just have to... Um, we, in this country, we do uh, Race for Life uh, events for cancer research as well, and we, predominantly you're encouraged to wear pink. So I think I will possibly wear a pink shirt on that day, and I'll have to see what the weather is for the rest of it. So uh, that's my theory. I am very secure with my masculinity and happy to wear a pink shirt. Uh, Josh just said, such a good lad, Kieran. I agree. Uh, Kieran says, I'll be fair and 
neutral, I think, is what he means, not natural. Uh, until we play each other, sports media journalism is my ambition for a career. Great, that's perfect. So um, so I'll stay as neutral as possible, appreciate the kind words. No problem, mate. Um, and at the, the time I've had with Kieran on, uh, uh, on, on the channels that I've dipped in and out of, he's been extremely neutral and fair. So... Um, as I said, don't just assume that it's it's a, a Newport fan and he's got nothing to say because he, he he has so uh, and he will be fair. So I think that's uh, uh, that's the best the best the best way I can put that. There was a journalist job at Wrexham, Kieran. Yeah, we uh, we went through a bit of media journalism for a while. Uh, sports analytics seem to be a better avenue. Journalism seem to be dying. Yeah, analytics certainly paper journalism, Kim. Um, and I think I don't know if anybody saw this today. There was a I've got a feeling that the leader have started to put stuff behind. Her. I'm not sure whether it is a paywall or whether it's just uh, whether you just have to subscribe. Because um, I thought you just had to subscribe and that got rid of it. But even nowadays, when you click on links at local papers and all you get is junk and stuff, I'm not reading it anymore. I'm not I'm not even I'm not even going to click on it. So um, the the media, I think probably your own website or channel or uh or setup is probably the way to go Kieran. um rather than uh, down the print route as people used to do um uh, or like kim says analytics is the way to go um that's uh, stats is big isn't it um Kieran just says i just love football and league too the only club i'm i'm ever reluctant to be kind to is mk that's about it and i'm guessing that if the mk thing is the natural thing about just about how it was created and how it came about is is uh, is probably uh, what I, what he uh, what he's referring to but uh, i i don't uh, I won't presume to guess. It is a paywall. It was a paywall. Yeah, I'm not reading the evening leader under uh, out of uh, from behind a paywall. They can uh, they can forget it. Um, uh, Kim is just highlighting the fact that MK Dons is a strange organisation. There we go. Uh, I do enjoy analytics, all that stuff. I do like the social media aspect too. Make content in a match week and all that. That's too much to read there, Kim. Stop, 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 stop writing. Uh, um thesis is on the comments <laughs> all right every, that's it because we're not talking we've, we're not talking Wrexham anymore um i've i need a drink and uh you lot have all got better things to do probably with your wednesday night so thank you very much to everybody for either just even if you've commented it if you've liked um if you can subscribe on youtube that would be great um as I said, uh, you know, there's quite a lot of people. Uh, Josh at the local pundit, Sean, the fearless guys have got a YouTube channel, so go and subscribe to them. Uh, Rob Ryan Red, I think they only put bits of their podcast out on YouTube, but I'm not sure, so check that. I listen to their podcasts using my um, just using my podcatcher I uh, 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 that I use, so I tend to listen to theirs audio. Sean does a lot of live streams. Carl at the uh, the Welsh Beast. Um, he obviously puts out his little videos. The if if you're not aware, I think the Men in Blazers. I, this is not meant to be uh, derogatory to anything anybody else does, but the the little nugget of content that I look forward to the most at the moment comes from Tommy Kaus. and that is the Men in Blazers this week in Wrexham. Um, so we tend to get like a ten minute video. Uh, with a little bit of story and then a match day vlog, uh, and I think that video is superb. So if you don't if you don't know what that is, go on the Men in Blazers channel uh, and just look for this week in Wrexham, or have a look on uh, Tommy Kaus's, uh Twitter sort of page because uh, he'll obviously post that. That tends to come on a Thursday, so we'll get the next episode probably tomorrow morning at some point. So uh, that's uh, that's outstanding co content that is. So. Uh, so yeah, Michael says I'll be here till midnight. Yeah, well, I, I, I probably won't because I, I think people are fed up now. So, uh, so yeah. So right. So go, uh, go and enjoy your evenings, everybody. Thank you very much again. I will endeavour to pull this off and push it out as an audio podcast as well, which I'll do. I have to wait a little bit of time for it to 
to render the back end of YouTube. So I'll uh, I'll try and do that tomorrow. Um, and it will also go out. It normally goes out on a Thursday on uh, Rex and Premier Radio. So uh, so those boys will get that as well. Um, so that's why I can't be alone more than two hours because I only have a two hour window for. Uh, for them um and then we will we'll try and do a stream on friday so if anybody's interested friday night we'll come and we'll try and get excited about that game at grimsby um so thanks very much everybody 